Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to rugged and scenic Indian, Alaska, just south of the state's largest city of Anchorage. The steep mountains of the Chugach Range jut nearly straight out of the ground, it seems. The land is covered in pine and fir trees, as well as alder, tall blueberry, and devil's club. The area features 30% of all plant species in Alaska, so the fauna present is very diverse. White doll sheep and mountain goats can be seen on the tops of the mountains from downtown Anchorage, as nature has a way of pushing into civilization here. It's very common to see moose, brown bear, black bear, and various other wildlife along the highways around the area. This is a place where the boundary between the rigors of the life animals live and human existence are blurred and nearly inseparable. The Robert Spur Memorial Hill Climb at Bird Ridge was celebrating its 29th year and featured a 3,400-foot climb. The trail meanders through woods and hills and is a local favorite event for running enthusiasts. Bird Ridge is a trail just off the Seward Highway at around 14 miles from the south edge of Anchorage. On Father's Day, June 18, 2017, Patrick Cooper, a 16-year-old boy who had just completed his sophomore year, was running the trail with his mother, Katrina. He was running in the youth division of the race, and she in the adult division. Before they left, Patrick grabbed his cell phone, and his mother switched her phone to airplane mode to save battery life. Patrick had just completed the 1.5-mile junior uphill portion of the race when his mother called him her little mountain goat and hugged him before she continued up the hill to finish the adult portion. Patrick was a happy and energetic boy who loved hugs and smiling. He enjoyed being outdoors and running. He was looking forward to shooting hockey goals with his friend after he finished his run with his mom. He was born premature and had some disabilities, but his congenial personality was undeniable. His biological parents had given him up for adoption after finding out he had a seizure disorder, autism, and ADHD. He was adopted by Katrina and her husband at the time, David. He was extremely gregarious despite his autism. The Bird Ridge Run would be his third race of this year. With his portion of the race finished, Patrick was slow hiking back down the trail with a small group of youth runners. The kids were chatting and laughing and not paying any attention as they were done with the hard part. As the group hiked down, Patrick lost focus for a few seconds at a confusing juncture in the trail. He headed off on a fork of the trail that was not on the race circuit and nobody was walking on. He was only a short distance down the trail when he noticed some rustling in the bush near him. Patrick figured it was no big deal, but finally noticed the others were not near him anymore. As he paused to look for the other joggers, he noticed a large black bear looking at him from a short distance away. The bear was between where he had come from and where he was. Now he only had one way to go, further down the trail and away from the others of his group. As Patrick would walk, the bear would stalk up closer. The boy was scared by this and began running. The bear followed suit. Patrick became very alarmed and wanted to speak with his mother. Taking his cell phone out, he dialed her number, but got her voicemail. He kept a careful eye on the bear as he tried to put distance between the two. He texted his mother and his brother, but got no response. He repeated the texting and reaching out as his fear mounted. He left a few voicemails describing that he was afraid because he had a bear chasing him and he didn't know what to do. Katrina finished her run down the hill and went to the muster point where she told the boys to meet after the race. She looks over and sees Patrick's water bottle and raincoat and immediately has a sense of foreboding. He was supposed to pick that up and take it with him when he came down the hill, and he should have been down well before her. That's when Patrick's brother Jesse ran up to Katrina. He had just retrieved his phone from his backpack and noticed several messages from Patrick, indicating that a bear was chasing him. Suddenly a fog of family, friends, and volunteers started dashing up the mountain while Patrick's brother Jason went down the hill to find more help. Jesse managed to frantically dial Patrick's phone number and he answered. He was terrified and asked his brother what to do. Men in the crowd surrounding Jesse and overhearing the conversation offered advice on how to stand up to the bear and intimidate it. They called 911 and tried to triangulate Patrick's location, but the cell coverage was too intermittent to accurately do so. The call dropped and Patrick could not be reached again. The search party didn't know precisely where he was, so they fanned out and scoured as much area as they could. The last person to see him indicated where it was that Patrick veered off the trail. John Weddleton had branched off from the main part of the search party when he heard a noise above him on the trail. 
Suddenly, a large black bear came toward him to about ten feet away. John looked over and saw Patrick lying on the ground, bitten and motionless. Armed park rangers soon arrived at Patrick's location and confronted the bear. It was guarding Patrick's body. The rangers used shotgun slugs and shot the bear in the face. The big bear disappeared into the surrounding brush, leaving a blood trail. The rangers reclaimed Patrick's body from the bear and flew his remains out by helicopter. Patrick's friends miss him dearly, and his mother still folds his clothes. Authorities note this attack as a predatory attack. Alaska state biologists returned to the area and used planes and helicopters to shoot four bears. They feared the bears might run off if they used tranquilizer darts and they would lose them. One of the bears they shot, a 250-pound male, had been shot by a shotgun slug in the face. They were confident they killed the bear that killed Patrick.